is Darius at Retail Tech Podcast at uh, Shop Talk 2016, and I'm here with uh, Michael Klein uh, from Adobe Systems. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for giving me the time um, to do this discussion. I'm really interested to find out what Adobe is uh, doing to help omni-channel, multi-channel retailers. Uh, if you could uh, start with uh, like a short in, in, uh, uh, overview. Great. Uh, so Adobe is uh, very well entrenched in the retail space and uh, we've been well entrenched with the desktop and the mobile space for quite some time. Uh, not only with our creative products but also with our uh, legacy from the Omniture acquisition of data where we're measuring uh, seven and a half cents of every ten cents going through the internet retailer 500. Uh, we recognize though that uh, and we, we, we started to build against this about two years ago, where uh, retail still is taking place in the physical brick and mortar store. Uh, there are folks that, uh, like Mark Andreessen, that said that the store would go away and it would become a dinosaur, but all the data tells us and indicates that the store is here, it's here to stay, and it's a very important part of the consumer journey. Uh, so what we've been able to do and what we've been going after with our partners and with our own professional services uh, agencies internally and externally is to build what we call the retail immersive experience. Uh, and that's uh, giving the ability to bring the best of digital into the physical space. Sometimes uh, this could be called fidgetal, bringing physical and digital together uh, and being able to offer a different type of experience to elevate the experience in a store because we do know that store traffic is down. Uh, the comps, the comparable store sales for physical stores is also being challenged by e-commerce even though e-commerce is growing at double digit rates. So there's this balance that retailers, multi-channel retailers are trying to find uh, because they still need to have folks go into the store so uh, driving these digital experiences in store is going to become uh, more and more commonplace for the retail industry and uh, we're helping enable that uh, with our retail immersive store experience program. Yeah, so I mean that's really like a, an existential challenge for local retailers uh, to be able to connect and engage with local shoppers and they have to have uh, really innovative ways of doing this because as you know I mean the today's shopper is mobile and they are just they probably have a million things on their mind and they need to be served when they are and where they are so how does this uh, immersive experience actually help bring in traffic to a retail store so we have information from one of our Canadian retailers that have invested heavily in uh, hundreds of these screens, these large touch display screens. Uh, and when they, and they've also worked with quite a few uh, their sporting goods outfit. Can, can you mention their name? Uh, it's the FGL Sports okay. uh, and Sportcheck uh, uh, branch. Uh, uh, that is uh, a division of Canadian Tire. Okay. Uh, they're based in Western Canada. And they've put in this digital or this digital technology within their stores. And they've uh, recorded and, uh, and spoken uh, on stage at the Adobe Summit last year that the store comps were double digit for those stores. Wow. Uh, because they were providing what I call merchantainment. Okay. Uh, not just because we can go online and we can price compare, but being able to touch, feel, and really experience product has to take place in the physical space. So uh, uh, that's a lot of the compelling. Uh, and also the experience of shopping is not going to completely go away. Again, we do love the idea of great pricing and price comparison, but that uh, gratification, the ability to touch the fabric, to smell the leather, right. is still going to be very important, and we need to make sure that that's enhanced, and digital is going to be a way to, uh, to bring that to life. Uh, so, what is the overall solution that a retailer would use 
uh, including the, the uh, you know what Adobe is providing. There is hardware, there is a cloud, Adobe Marketing Cloud, mm -hmm. I think. So can you go over that a little bit? Sure. So uh, the experience that we're featuring here at Shop Talk, which is the retail immersive experience, it begins with uh, an anonymous shopper walking into the store. So they're going to encounter first a hardware device. Uh, we do work very closely with the likes of Samsung, so there definitely needs to be an investment in the hardware, uh, whether that be the screen for the consumer, the tablet for the store associate. Uh, and then we work closely with partners, agencies, uh, like a Razorfish or a Sapient Nitro, a Censure, Deloitte Digital, that are bringing, working very closely with our retailers in concert with our own professional services that then start to build out the framework or the platform of data and content. And that is coming from the Adobe Marketing Cloud, primarily from our experience management solution, our analytics solution, our Adobe Target solution, which provides recommendations, cross-sell, upsell, uh, and also our campaign solution for uh, CRM and campaign management. So those solutions in concert from the cloud, working with the partners who are helping uh, enable and install the hardware in the physical location, and then really putting the pipes in place, because that's what you start to, you need to do. Because we already have, many of these customers already have that foundation of data and content coming to them from the marketing cloud for their web experience and their mobile experience. Now we're able to take that and create the pipes and the, and the, the conduit to bring those experiences to the physical store as well. And that's the mechanism uh, that uh, brings that all together. Okay, uh, so typically um, the retailer would work with uh, the agency to design the overall experience, and right. as a part of that, the agency would utilize the Adobe technologies with any other pieces that they need to bring in together. Right, and also they will leverage our subject matter expertise. Uh, we find the best implementations and programs are when there's hardware, there's technology, software, there's SI agency support, and there's also Adobe subject matter expert support from our product people to help make sure that uh, we're, we're going in the right direction, especially from the roadmap. Great. Now, we talked about the pull, basically, to the store uh, from using this kind of uh, technology. What about any kind of conversion aspects when the customer is in the store. How, how, how does uh, the technology help convert more? First of all, there's deeper, typically deeper product information. So we know that when consumers walk into a store, they've typically done some research. They are more armed and more powerful than ever before. So the ability to add more information and also perhaps more engaging information like video uh, but last year, in the middle of the year, Retail Touchpoints put out a study that indicated that consumers that engaged with digital technology in the physical store were 20% more likely to convert while in the store when they engage with that technology. So it, 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 is, uh, it is an added benefit and an experience, and it also, I think there's a trust factor. Because now if I have more information about the product, it looks like there's investment in the product and in the experience. That creates trust and authenticity for the consumer and gives them that much more confidence to buy. Great, so, um, so we're talking about, I mean the retail landscape includes uh, the, the, the actual stores and a lot of stores are obviously in shopping malls. How would, uh, is there something different from this experience that a shopping mall can actually use? Uh, well, the, what we've already seen in, in play uh, when we think about the draw to the store is many shopping malls, and Westfield is here at the, the show, uh, they're themselves putting beacons into, the, um, into their buildings and into the public spaces. So depending on the relationship that retailers might have with the mall owner, there is now the ability through both NFC and GPS to start to communicate with shoppers in the mall 
to then direct them to particular brands and particular experiences that may be in that physical location. We see that quite often in, uh, in airports as well. Okay. And uh, we work very closely also with the MGM Grand Group that own this hotel. And they're also experimenting with beacons and technology in the public spaces to engage with guests and travelers as they go through the public space, knowing that I maybe booked my trip earlier, I'm interested in food, and maybe I go to a show, and maybe these are other types of activities that, given that information, would be relevant to me and my experience as I'm on property. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just, uh, it's amazing the amount of opportunity available in how all of these different experiences can be really optimized for both the uh, store owners or the operators of the malls and the groups, entertainment groups, as well as the shoppers. So that's, that's really uh, what excites me for the yeah. ne next five, ten years. It's going to but be amazing. To be careful of the creepy factor. Okay. So we just talked about that. I was on a panel earlier today about personalization. So we have a lot of great data and we can deliver that in experiences and offers to consumers, but we have to deliver value at the same time right. and we can't be creepy about it. Exactly. So that's, uh, that's the conversation that's also happening quite a bit right now is, yes, consumers are asking for personalization, but they want it to be valuable, authentic, and they don't want it to be creepy. Definitely, that's I think on, on, on mind of uh, a lot of consumers and shoppers when they're even trying to like authenticate when they go to a store and you know, the, the movies uh, have not, uh, uh, have definitely helped with that, you know, like with the eye tracking and things like that. So people are concerned, uh, what am I giving? What kind of uh, access am I giving to my life right. when I do something like this? Okay, so um, what about, um, so if you were a retailer, um, how would you actually plan staying on top of what's going on in the technology field right now and the retail tech, as if we can call it that? Uh, so we see quite a bit of uh, the idea of building an innovation lab or some type of uh, think tank or petri dish uh, in, the, in the San Francisco Bay Area. We have brands like Target, Walmart, American Eagle. They have all, and th all those brands are based elsewhere in the United States. Right. But they built these small incubators in the Bay Area to be able to start to develop and think about what is innovation, what works for their brand, and I think that that's the other very important piece is that what works for one brand may not work for another. So we really always need to consider and keep the customer in the center of all this, and also keep in the center of all this the idea of efficiency and time savings. Because consumers are not going to engage with technology for technology's sake they're in going to engage with technology, if it makes their lives better, if it allows them to get in and out of that store faster, more enjoyable, and the idea of delight and surprise, mm -hmm. but not just for the sake of technology, for, for technology's sake. So uh, we see a lot of that, uh, th those incubators, and uh, there's also a fine line between going after the bright and shiny, but at the same time, we want retailers to start doing something. Try, you know, have that conversation. What is right for the consumer and, the, and your brand? And try something, because if you don't try something, everybody's going to pass you eventually. Right, so th that obviously is definitely more viable for very large retailers. What about uh, retailers that cannot afford to set up an innovation lab? How should they approach the, this problem? So we see brands like Rebecca Minkoff is one of the, you know, right now the poster child for many of these brands because of what they've done in their stores with their dressing rooms and their magic mirrors. They're a small outfit. They're not, you know, they don't have hundreds of stores. They don't have a big corporate office like a Target or a Walmart. Um, so they're doing it with a small group within their corporate office. 
and whether it's the head of e-commerce or the head of stores, uh, somebody is owning that and taking responsibility for innovation and bringing this to the store. So it isn't a requirement to build that lab or that innovation, but it's important to have that concept within the greater organization so that there's this group of people, whether they're in a conference room or they're in a different state, no matter where they may be, they're responsible for bringing to the table these new concepts for the physical store. Absolutely. Um, and of course, that probably even becomes uh, a more of a, an important factor for them to have relationships with the right agencies that know retail and can put them in touch with, you know, again, not the shiny objects, but realistic products that can actually add value to them in more of a sh I mean so somebody I guess uh, was talking uh, on, on a panel and um, I heard a reference to that comment that uh, uh, the ROI is not uh, as important as uh, return on investment is not uh, the same as it used to be before but if you're in retail if you're a retailer your you know ROI is like probably the top yes <laughs> on, on your mind so you can't say that and that's where we see, no matter if you're big or small, whether you have 10 stores or 10,000 stores, all of these programs need to start in one to no more than five stores. Test pilot. Mm -hmm. Don't, because to your point, yes, somewhere along the line, a CEO or a CFO will allow some of this to happen especially if it's driven by marketing and the idea of press and you know, good uh, eyeballs coming to the business, that will only go so far. Eventually, if you want to put that technology in every store, you will have to definitely drive an ROI. Right. The one piece that I think is also quite interesting when we think about large enterprise and maybe smaller to medium businesses is the idea of agility. And while the smaller outfit, the smaller chain, may not have as many resources, they typically have more agility. They're not as tied down by large corporate legacy processes and systems that may prevent them from trying some of this stuff. Where some of the smaller organizations, because they are smaller and they're a little bit more agile, they can say, and maybe they're not public, they're privately held owner and VP or CEO, whoever it is, get together and say, we're going to try this. We're going to put this out there. And we're going to work maybe with a smaller agency, not one of the bigger agencies. And we're going to put this in store New York and store in Chicago or San Francisco. And we're going to see how this works. Right. Yeah. So I, I do want to qualify my last comment. Uh, I'm, I'm sure the comment that was made was in context to what the speaker was talking about. So I don't want to judge that. But uh, it, it is. Um, it, it's really like at at some point of time, all of these things need to start contributing to the bottom line for for the retailers. If you're in one way or does, another, yes. one way or another, you you could even it could be quantified easily as, a, as opposed to as in like uh, conversions or indirectly also but because there are you know wh when I talk to some people they say well there is no way to really quantify the benefits of this well I, I think in that case really the vendor needs to help the, the retailer understand ways to quantify it you can't just like throw it out in the air and say let's see what happens right. you know long term at least so one of the things that you're going to start seeing, especially when you think about the large format touchscreens, is many of them will have uh, cameras in them, and they also will be able to understand things like dwell time. How long is that customer engaging? And as you saw through the demonstration, as I start to engage in touch and then maybe put products in my basket, I have the ability to now capture that information and start to make correlations in my data based on perhaps time of day, trends, frequencies within the store that I can start to connect the engagement with the technology to an uplift in sales potentially. That is possible. And it, it does take some, uh, a little bit more work in terms of correlating this set of data with that set of data. 
but it's there and it will take a little bit more time and information to bring all that together. The other piece is uh, when we think about customer surveys and uh, customer satisfaction and net promoter scores, we'll see more of that coming into play because many brands are using, retailers are using the net promoter score to understand what customer satisfaction is and they are seeing some pockets of retailers seeing that digital technology in their store is raising their net promoter and their CSAT scores. Very interesting. Well, this uh, discussion could probably go on for hours because there is no end, but uh, I, I really want to appreciate and thank you for the time that uh, you gave me. And if anybody wants to learn more about what Adobe is doing in retail, uh, how do you recommend they uh, learn more, they find out more information? So uh, you can go to uh, www.adobe.com slash retail and uh, that's where we have our retail industry pages and uh, we're explaining more of how the marketing cloud uh, and the, the creative cloud and the document cloud are helping retailers move their business and differentiate themselves in this disruptive marketplace of Omnichannel. Okay, great. Um, and I, I will we'll put an uh, add a link to the uh, show notes to that page uh, so it can be found easy. Well, um, again, Michael, thank you so much for your time and I look forward to hearing uh, a lot of more exciting news from Adobe. Thank you very much. It was a ple pleasure, Darius. Uh, great to meet you and uh, it's uh, been a great show. So, Thank you very much. Thank you.